Hello and welcome to the Turf Shed Podcast. I'm Evan Barrows. I'm Dylan Connolly. And today we are really excited to be joined by Neve Farrell and Podge McNamee of Ham Sandwich. Thanks for having us on. Good. Thanks for coming on. Oh, it's great to have you. Are you, you Turf? Thanks. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> We we can though. <laughs> There's only limited amount of time left on it though, you know. <laughs> and never never a wrong time for it. Never a wrong time for it. <laughs> well, I think it's the most Irish episode that we've had so far. The Turfshed podcast <laughs> with ham sandwich. With ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> really. And a packet of potato. Oh, uh, and a packet of potato. <laughs> Great combo. Guys, I just want to start off this episode with some good news. You guys have an Irish tour kicking off on the 12th of November in Kilkenny. How does it feel to be getting back playing music again? Oh, it's class. Like, it's it's really exciting um, to have finally have some gigs on the horizon, you know, for us especially, because we're like, we're like, a you know, we love our doing live shows. Like, that's where we love to be. Like, so the idea of getting back to some gigs again is fantastic. So have you been getting together and practicing over the last while and getting your live show together for the tour? We haven't really had a chance to, but um, we, we, the more, what we've been doing really is just focusing purely, which is, it kind of kills two birds as well anyway, so it's nice, but we've been, me, myself, Neve and Darcy have been meeting in Neve's gaff. Um, obviously when we can, COVID, yeah, sure, yeah, legal yeah. or whatever, yeah. but, um, yeah, so it's great because we've we we had a bunch of new songs. We pretty much had about maybe eighty percent of the album tracked or so by last October, but it's been put on obviously hold. But um, we even just this weekend gone, we we kind of met up to to kind of try and polish that off and stuff, and things went really well. We had like four or five, well maybe about four bonus tracks that probably normally I reckon would have been turfed, but we really got properly you know we got gave them at least a life so i think there's one or two that came yes. from that but yeah like the biggest thing is i think we we'll have loads of new tunes but I, I suppose what we'd normally do is you don't want your audience to be bombarded with a whole load of songs they don't don't know you know but but it's yeah. lovely to have a pick of a, a, a large bunch so i'm looking forward to that like usually we'd have a set list that we'd vi- change here or there but there wouldn't be a lot a massive change up but i think this time around we have potential to be able to like really change it up every night and have a bit of fun with it brilliant yeah. that sounds yeah. great but you're not you're actually not too far away from us on the 3rd of december you're in monroe's mm. so oh, no way. Oh, nice. we'll see you there we'll see you there we're definitely coming no way. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, we can't we'll wait go we're going to the old sesh like yeah <laughs> <laughs> <Six> months. definitely <laughs> It'll be well needed by then. <laughs> I know there's loads of drink hidden, like off camera there. Like, <laughs> there's probably Cups, whiskey on that shelf. Cups of tea, uh, uh, there. Cups of tea. <laughs> coffee. Big cup of straight vodka. I want, I want the coffee. <laughs> Class. There's a lovely peaty. There's a lovely peaty smell off this. I can imagine. <laughs> Terrible turf joke. The turf jokes are just going to not stop yeah. happening. So. Uh, <laughs> did you not say you're you're going to be on our turf on the third of December? Yeah. <laughs> done, done, so done. many. Oh, so, I love it. Neve, I'd like if you could bring me back to Good Friday of two thousand and three. <laughs> explain to me how ham sandwich came about. Do we have to go back there? Um, <laughs> we uh, yeah, I mean we. We met, like, we met before that. And then the Good Friday was a party that our bass player at the time, John, lived in a house and had a crucifixion party. He lived in a house. That's a good uh, party (laughs) story. He lived in a house. Uh, And we we went... a very big house in the country. (laughs) (laughs) And we had, uh, like, drinks and stuff like that. And then that was when we kind of had the conversation of starting up a band... Um, his myself, John, and Podge, wasn't it? it was the three of us? Yeah. yeah his it, like his sister Katrina, she went to some art college or whatever. But she had this giant, kind of ironic, um, if that's the right word, painting of Jesus. Like she's not religious or whatever. I don't know why she even had this, but that was the whole point. Of, like just that painting alone, and um, there was a just a 
it was a, a, a it's risky even saying this kind of stuff now. It's, it's <laughs> but like at the time look we're we're kids like we were in our early 20s and it was like I think even there might have been like an email invite. It was like, let's all get nailed in our teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> but, but, uh, oh, this is brutal. I ever met Neve and John had already been in bands and basically, um, what was it? Yeah, I kind of somehow, like Neve was far more of an official um, interviewed audition, whereas I kind of, just blagged my way and I didn't know <laughs> even what I was going to be in the band but I was like I'm in the band I don't care I'm going to be in the band <laughs> and just somehow managed to fit in but Neve already like had been in bands he was a singer um, but yeah no that was kind of the most official night like we'd met but there was no real proper talk about you know let's start a band but that's genuinely when we you know, it's yeah. not like, oh, we need to make up a cool story. No, that's really what happened. Yeah, yeah. I met, actually, the first time I met Neve, which is also not going to be really believable, is uh, Paddy's Day. And I met her in a truck. I was wearing a, a green Afro rig, uh, <laughs> wig that I was trying to sell. I was doing, <laughs> it, like, volu- I was doing volunteer work. And yeah, I think you so must have been as well. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were all doing like volunteer work for P- the Paddy's Day Festival. And myself and the bass player John were working in like a information point at the top of Grafton Street and Podge came running up one of the days with like a green afro wig on and come into the bit little booth and was like having the crack <laughs> and that was, yeah, that no, was, was the first time we met for the oh, were you? oh god yeah with you you were selling as well no we I wasn't I, just, well, I worked in the information booth what? I'm nearly sure I did. I don't remember well, selling the, 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 When I met you, you, you did were one of the days. <laughs> yeah, you must have went rogue that day. <laughs> yeah, maybe you did. <laughs> was it was it very natural when when you f- kind of had your first jam and you know you you started writing or how how did that work? Tell us a little bit about that. It wasn't too bad to be honest with you. Yeah, considering because um, for one, like I said, genuinely, me will tell you, I. I just arrived in rehearsals and I was sort of like waiting for my, my roles or, or, or role. But I was just told technically, uh, so you try singing this bit and I, I basic guitar, like a very basic guitar. And I was like, play this and sing. And Neve started singing. And, and it, I think it was literally, a, there was no sort of like that. Yeah, we'll we go with that. It was almost, it was almost like just the most organic. Yeah. And that's that yeah. bit done. Neve and you're going to be singing. And it sounds our voices complemented each other so well, like yeah. straight away we all recognise that. I think, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That you know they complemented each other really well in this, they and it was something do. that we should definitely concentrate on having the mm. kind of dual vocals. I think at the start my vocals would have been very heavy <laughs> and <laughs> probably quite no, American. They weren't. Like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know, remember, like if you hear early demos of our rehearsals, because obviously that's what bands would do is like just when they kind of rough out a song, they might towards the end when they think they've kind of got a bit of a grip on it, they'll just do one take of of a song. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. But I'm I think- fair. I'm fairness. I think my like both of our voices is very different to what was in 2003, 2004, like yeah. very yeah. different. But yeah. I, I I think it's fair to say that Podge, you're you've a very uh, deep voice, and Neve, you're you've like a, you know a really good you know mid to high tone, yeah. and when you put the two of them together, they just you know they sound lovely. They're the full package. It just works because it's all, like it's automatically like without even trying, we sort of automatically harmonize in a sense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like our yeah. I think our voices automatically sound really good together because you know they're 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 very different like um and it works you know yeah. for us it's yeah. great yeah. i think a big massive thing is just like yeah we we got very lucky there was a guy i think his name is seamus i have terrible memory of names i'm nearly certain it was seamus and he was it the, owned the, man. the, the rehearsal first rehearsal room, room we, yeah across from so yeah. basically it was the dream rehearsal room it was right across the road from Wheelands, where we would have been happy to frequent whenever in dublin mm. and um i don't know there was just just it's like it might sound mad but you just some places just have a, an ambience and we just like you said about getting on well in terms of the music but like we didn't even really think about the fact that we we're just immediately all very comfortable in each other's company from this 
day one pretty much there was no sort of like yeah getting to know you sort of it was weird wasn't it you know what i mean it just yeah, felt like, it was you, like yeah i never really like, never really looked at it like that but yeah we kind of yeah very naturally became friends almost immediately like you know we're that makes i think life a lot easier you know we well. kind of it's uh our friendships have only gotten stronger over the year then as well do you know what <clears> i mean so it's like um it's it's a uh, really nice to have to you know be able to do music and do something that you love but it's also nice to have like you know this uh, this little group of solid friends that mm. you know we, we yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll always have like you know yeah yeah definitely that, it always makes it easier when it just clicks naturally i suppose exactly yeah yeah oh, how close are you are you good friends like uh, we are, <laughs> good we friends, no podge <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've uh yeah we which we is a bonded him. like sorry <laughs> which is a, would you say is a bonded well are we, are we sure? Are we sure we have? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, this is man, so Irish. Sorry, so Irish. Yeah, we're not like the, the giddy interview. We, we haven't been I, interviewed in ages, so I'm like, I know, yeah. it's all new again. It's just great. Podge, I, I read that your on stage uh, tipple of choice is is a certain tonic. Tonic wine, also known as gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> a certain caffeinated, oh, yeah. caffeinated tonic wine, also known here as a bottle of B. <laughs> I know the last time I had a bottle of Buckfast, the last thing I wanted to do was play a gig. So does it? Does that bring out a certain creative side in your playing? I, I call it a bottle of behave yourself. <laughs> 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 Um, oh, I don't know. It's it's a dangerous game. I have to say, <laughs> like it, it. I I genuinely love Buckfast. It's probably unhealthy. A lot of like I think people who love it get it and don't get yeah. that people don't love it. But then the people who hate it think there's something seriously wrong with you. Like <laughs> um, I remember we did a gig in in village in village venue in Dublin and we supported um, the oh. Christ, Sultan's a ping. We supported them. It was my birthday yes. that night. And uh, I was drinking a bottle of Buckfast backstage after the gig. And the lead singer, I couldn't honestly tell you his name, but he was looking at me for a minute. And then he sort of, like, not rudely, but he had, like he interrupted my conversation with whoever I was talking to. And he was like, do you, do you care about your brain? <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, that's not very good for your brain. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably some truth right. to that. <laughs> it's my birthday. Mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was like, you don't you skull uh, whiskey straight on stage? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. Oh, that's class. Oh. Yeah, it's a dangerous drink. It's tasty mm. though. But Can yeah, you? like I, I would if 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 I was to advocate it, I'd be like, there's a line, and I think it's like the top of the yellow label. Don't drink any more than that, and then take it easy from that point on when you're on stage <laughs> and you should be fine <laughs> okay. Good can can you explain to us where the name ham sandwich came about because i read that there was a couple of other names in the mix at the time and there was there was one or two names in auditions where uh, i think maybe podge might have thrown one thrown one in the mix there to see who laughed kind of thing but uh, can you explain yeah, where the name ham sandwich came from one of them one of them was a. Uh, I, I don't think especially I don't think it's oh, no, one of them was uh, <laughs> Stephen Hawkins had a had a say in one of the potential names. Was it Stephen Hawkins? I think yes. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I think I. I don't really fully know, but I do remember there was a chat. We we got our first gig kind of way ahead of time. We got enough. You know, it's like any band. We've only got about six songs ready, and we get a call, and it's like, do you want to do a gig tomorrow night in Voodoo Lounge? And we were like holy crap, yeah. And they were like, all right, grand, I'll stick your name in the poster. What's what's the name? We didn't have one. And yeah. I was on a call. It was actually, funnily enough, it was D- DC Fontaine's, Fontaine's DC's manager, Trev. Um, and I just, he was like, I need a name. And I was like, all right. And there was five of us in the band. And I literally just was like on the spot. And I went, famous five. And he stuck it on the poster. And I just thought it was bizarre that like, doesn't matter what you're called. It'll be, you know, there's free reign. It'll go on a poster. So there was, it, I, I think that kind of prompted us to just come up with something just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but it wasn't a full on, I don't think it was any, was it? I don't think it was a full on intention. It was just no. like this. 
one night we had a had a rehearsal and I'd say 15 minutes of a kind of a whip around with jokey names. We weren't even writing these down. It was like, it was a bit of a joke. Yeah, yeah. And the bizarre part was the only name that came up in all of the ideas that didn't get a laugh was Ham Sandwich. But it didn't get a kind of, ooh, it was just like the last name that someone came up with. And yeah, no one even said, we'll call ourselves that. It was like somehow, it's just magically It just happened us. like, yeah. yeah, and it was like, it was kind of one of those, it's one of those, phrases as well like it's very very familiar to Irish people and with, like the whole thing is as well as you want a name that's gonna be memorable do you know what I mean that's gonna just stick in somebody's head like that's you know and ham sandwich is just kind of the right side of silly I think and yeah. like at the start when we started out like we got so much stick for it like people going using you'll never get anywhere change your names that's a terrible name like you need to change it and we kind of were stubborn and we stuck to our guns because we never we never want like want to be the, one of those bands that had to kind of go so-and-so formerly known as Ham Sandwich. Do you know what I mean? Sure, we never, yeah. ever wanted to do that. And it got, got to the point then where I think it was the release of our second album was when people kind of flipped and came around to the name. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like a, this weird thing. It was like we started getting like daytime play on the radio and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, like people weren't really saying that we had a bad name anymore. They were going, oh yeah, well, this is ha like Ham Sandwich's new music. You know, it's, and I don't see us. I like we, to me, we are Ham Sandwich. Like I don't see what else we could be called. Like yeah. for <laughs> us as a band, I think it's a perfect name Buff for ass, us, you know? Ass, <laughs> <laughs> I believe um, Bono wasn't a fan of the name. The uh, Yeah, he... <laughs> In in his defense, so in fairness to him, as much stick as ever gives him, he did say that it's legit. He said, uh, "Oh, I think you should." He, I think his exact words were, "Oh, I think you should change your name." And then, um, but then he said, "Well, who am I to talk?" We used to be called feedback or something like that. They used yeah. to be called feedback, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you two is like a what is it like a fighter plane or some sort of thing, and they got lots of stick for that as well. Mm. Yeah, so. Your first album release with Ham Sandwich, Carry the Meek, it won a Meteor Music Award. How how was that for your first album to to come out and just go? Okay, we're after actually winning an award for this. It's amazing. That I, was I'm insane. Sure. That was a fix. <laughs> that was insane. That was a mad time because it was like it was the Meteor Awards. And where did he just fall over? I don't know. No, I'm just tying my shoe. Oh, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> it's an shoe lace time. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely <laughs> we i remember was it in the rds the meet your words and there was yeah. like there was yes. like all you know your your irish celebrities there and stuff like that and we were up for hope of the year i think it was wasn't it yeah yeah uh, it was basically, and it's basically the prediction award like uh this band might do good things so it was an award for nothing essentially <laughs> yeah but it was generally did people not sort of see it as like a little bit of a kiss of death when you got the award, it was yes. like, oh, you know, okay. um, yeah. but we, I, I remember sitting in the crowd and I remember our uh, late manager, Derek Nally was there and he was like, and he turned, I think he turned around to me at one point and he goes, if I give you this Snickers, it means you're going to win. And he gave me a Snickers bar or a Mars bar or something. And I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And then next of all, we were called and, you know, we, we won and it was, mad like oh. just mad mad to go through something like that like yeah. when you're mm. that new in the scene you know what I mean it's such a it's such a huge deal yeah the most surreal thing was like on that night I'll never forget it was in the space of <laughs> Darcy loves this story so basically we were obviously loading ourselves up on the whole experience and then there was a free bar and the free bar was quite nice <laughs> just <laughs> lots of choice but basically um, there was a guy dressed as you know Mr. Tato like in the big yeah. Mr. Tato suit <laughs> yeah. and I was already half cut like <laughs> I was like, slowly running towards Mr. Tato and you know when you have those moments with someone the connection he, he knew that he needed to do the same thing so the two of us were slow motion and running towards each other and all the while Charlize Theron was walking right past me and Darcy was like you just fucking ditched Charlize Theron for Mr. Tato <laughs> oh my god oh my god oh, that's amazing 
<laughs> yeah, but Mr. Taylor. the um, we didn't realize if you win an award, it's it's so straight. No one warns you. You basically kind of get put into this tent full of like there was about I'd say twelve different groups of media. Oh yeah. So there was a two-hour <laughs> intense media hunt hunt for us is from the second we walked off that stage okay it was kind of like it was wild it was a mad idea it was mad for us but it was kind of like your night's over for a good two and a half hours a bit of an anti you're basically like bombarded it. by all these people that just have to do their media job and go interviews oh, and stuff. what's it like to win but we had yeah. no idea that that happened so we're like, <laughs> what is going on Jeez. it was like good luck but then Moving moving on to your third album, um, Stories from the Surface, which went straight into the Irish number one, straight into number one in the Irish album charts. Mm. And it was the first time that an independent, unsigned act achieved that. How did it feel to have accomplished something like that? It was, it was to me, it was genuinely bizarre. Um, I remember... The, I don't know, there's a guy, there's a journalist who was interviewing us for this. Sorry, my battery's about to die here, but it's grand. <laughs> um, <laughs> classic. Oh, this is yeah. brilliant. <laughs> but uh, real life problems. Uh, there's a guy called Danny McElhenney and he was interviewing us and he was like, he was kind of drip feeding us this stuff and he was going, you know, you'll, you'll get number one. I think he's, I think he's will get number one. And the, before he mentioned that, that was the last thing that I, we, I think any of us would have genuinely ever imagined. But because he said that, and he's kind of, he sort of knows the stuff, I was like, holy crap, why is he saying that? Um, but it was unbelievable. It was, a, it was a, we did put it into work, like I'm not going to lie, like it wasn't a sort of, um, you know, just the mass, just, so, you know, we, we promoted it, we did all the things you're meant to do. Mm still was a phenomenal achievement and we're still blown away and um, because at the time i think it was hosier and edge here and and like pretty big players i think even taylor swift and so mm. it's quite nuts but that that's, it, yeah that we it that's is quite amazing nuts, but it was because, amazing that's amazing because they're all backed by huge labels and then for a band to yeah. come along mm. independently and win just really shows the the, the power of the songs and the songwriting which is something to be very proud of. Yeah, yeah well, like it's, a, I mean... Go on. <laughs> no, I was just, it's like, it's even still now, like, when you say that, like, it still kind of, like, takes me back a little bit, kind of going, oh, Jesus, we did actually do, yeah. <laughs> we did actually do that. Do you know what I mean? You kind of, not that you take these things that happen to you for granted, but you just kind of, it happens and it's amazing and then you move on to the next thing that you want to, you know, do. You know what I mean? So, um it yeah it's 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 class and it's like and it you know it's great because we we released the album not knowing kind of what people's reaction would be because we you know why fox had done well and ants had kind of brought us to another level then so sure. it was like oh we need to really <laughs> really hope people like this you know and they did and they did and it was you know that's a, that's all you can ask for is that you know the people that are waiting on your music you know, really like the stuff that you're bringing out, the new stuff. Yeah. I think the biggest shock was like everything we'd released previous to that, in fairness, we wouldn't have really either maybe kind of had any money or backing properly. We're like, obviously we're still independent, but nothing really even got anywhere in the charts. Like if it charted at all, it was like way, you know, 28 in the charts. Don't think we ever got a single in the charts previous to this, as far as yeah. I remember. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we didn't. So, like, to go from like a band that never chart and and kind of we're so used to that, and we've we'd probably released about 17 singles at this stage. I'd say easily that yeah. with mm. over three albums to go like straight into number one. And mm. and we thought it was kind of like one of those things, amazing support, but then it'd die off. But we were in the top 10 for three weeks, which is another shocked to us like, it was amazing yeah to yeah. hold it there like, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that must have been amazing uh, just um I, i'd like to ask both of you the same question because i'm kind of intrigued to hear this answer you've supported absolutely insane acts and you've played insane gigs yourselves like i see you've, you supported bon jovi and slain you played with the pixies mumford and sons all these but throughout all your gig experience for both of you What's your best and worst gig experience? Best Ooh. and worst. 
Uh, I would say, right, I'll, will I go first while you think, Podge? Yeah, go on, yeah. I would say <laughs> my best would probably be, oh my God, there's so many gigs, like probably one of the Electric Picnic gigs, maybe other voices at Electric Picnic one year. Mm. We had we had opened the main stage on the Friday, like it was a last minute thing. And that was insane. And then it made it like other voices, like, like was just another level of insanity. Yeah. Uh, so that was probably, that's probably up there. One of my favorite and the worst. Well, I got sick into my mouth <laughs> during a gig. one time. Oh, man. We were like, we were doing like tour, a tour and um, I, we, it was like the, maybe the fourth gig in a row or the third gig in a row. And I was drinking and I was very, very hungover. And I, spewed in my mouth during the gig Nasty. <laughs> so that, was ter- that was horrible How do I, top that? I've, 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 I have war stories in that so that's the worst <laughs> like, as bad as I'm gonna go is that was that um, while you were singing uh yeah I had to like yeah oh. I had to uh just uh do a quick tactical oh. <laughs> yeah. not great like, you know what I mean no. not great no. <laughs> I won't be doing that again no for for me, it's it, it's a tough one. It's a toss up between a few things, but my favorite crowd I reckon that we've ever played to um, would have to be when we scored Mumford's. There was about I'd say comfortably it it felt like because normally if you play to a big big crowd, you know it's only a small like when we scored Bon Jovi, the crowds were clearly there for Bon Jovi, and it was sort of like they were just sort of going all right. Sure, there was somebody on it. There was uh, somebody bringing an American tourists around the sta- outside of the stage while we were playing our gig. Like, yeah. there was a guy <laughs> in an anger grinder right behind their drummer, literally using it like right behind him so yeah. loudly that we had to poke him with a stick to kind of tell him to stop it <laughs> in the middle of our show. And like, in the middle of our show. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! Um, the cheek. But of basically, I'd say, I'd say the, uh, two. Easy, easy to remember highlights for me would be at a crowd in Mumford's because when we walked out, it was like the warmest reception from the second we walked out. Mm. The anticipation was mental. We could, like, it's not our show. We were way down the bill and the, all the crowd were already there. And it was like we got a headline reaction at a massive festival. It was unbelievable. But then when we supported Arcade Fire and the Pixies, th- like, genuinely, the Pixies are easily one of my favorite bands and like they're not a band to me they're like more than that just it's it's like the guys all sat and had lunch with the pixies and i god knows where the hell i was but that's one of my biggest life regrets they were just <laughs> chilling the entire pixies and frank black actually was standing side stage as well for a lot of our gig and i didn't see him once another regret <laughs> checking this out um, and then the worst gig it's it was dark um I'm I, interested I, to hear what this is. <laughs> I bet you you'll know, or you'll have to know. The one that really sticks out for me, um, it's it's mad because a lot of the people in the crowd wouldn't have realised what was really going on. But basically, uh, we played this this um, festival called uh, Fantastival. And I don't know, we were headlined and we were there early and there was a lot of kind of irresponsible drink mess and then I think I was in, intense with like some of your friends and it was their fault but yeah. basically like, <laughs> I had the, you know I don't know you know when you have those it's not just that you're drunk you can have like rare off spell nights where you go a bit mad like you go a little bit strange and I went very strange and anything that could go wrong went wrong and Genuinely thought that band were going to kick me out. It was that bad, <laughs> but it was. So he was so rubber. rubber. He was so rubber. Yeah. It was bad. It lots, of, lots, of, lots, of, <laughs> lots. Like I, I was climbing up a pole in a tent, and there was there was wires on it, and I didn't realize I was literally pulling the entire sound desk. I was halfway down a big oh, tent geez. towards the stage, oh. and they were tr- like the old sound guys were trying to hold it. Um. That's true, Rob. Yeah. No, but no. What, uh, to be honest, with you, it, it wasn't. wasn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it really wasn't. <laughs> really wasn't. <laughs> wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that definitely is my absolute worst low point. 
That's that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have speechless after that. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of silence for a good, a solid. I'd say. I think we had to. Go, luckily, we had to do two gigs and just get on with it two nights later and for two more gigs in a row. And I was like, I just oh, have we to. Did, yeah. I just have to be quiet and keep my mouth shut and do the best gigs of, of my life for the next two nights and hope for the best because I genuinely did think to be talk like not that <laughs> the guys are like that but you know you're, you're doing absolutely chaotically bad gig you're going to assume the band are going to think think differently of you <laughs> <laughs> guys I'm just curious that um, you, we, you were just talking about releasing music independently there earlier on and you still do that to this day is that correct yeah yeah so fully independent I think we there's talks I don't like I to be honest with you I couldn't really talk about it too much because I don't really know and even maybe you can it's like there's a there's a crowd there's a crowd <laughs> beyond there's a crowd in um in Belgium slash Netherlands who who are m- most likely going to be involved with us on the next album but I cool. to be honest with you I don't fully know the ins and outs of it I'm the worst member of the band for that I kind of just show up I'm terrible like the guys do a lot of the groundwork I I'm the arsehole yeah. guy who just shows up I guess tries to do the gig. well I do bits but you know I guess my question is um, why did you choose to release independently rather than to seek a label because what were the benefits of it for you well I mean we kind of had the label thing at the start when we started out we had like um, it was the Sony was interested in us and we had to do like this sort of audition for Sony in the windmill lanes. No, no, not windmill lane. No, What's the place the, called? Boland's Mill. It was, yeah, it's where you two used to rehearse, I think. That's all so I we ha- And we had to like set up in this really sterile kind of dance rehearsal room and there was like four chairs set out in front of us facing us that these... Oh executives were going to sit on Jeez, and I just really remember like I don't have a like I have a memory of it just not being really great <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was great no I, I remember it well there was it was actually only one guy it was one guy and he was a young oh I thought there was four he, chairs there oh no it was Derek our late manager Derek and then this kind of cool hip young uh, London guy who was the Sony guy and oh. um he seemed, this is exactly what happened. I don't know if you know this, Neve. You, you must know, but you might have forgot. I so my memory is awful. He, we were, no, it wasn't too bad. It was just, obviously, you're in a dance rehearsal, wooden floor area, and it's you're doing this restrictive gig. But he was incredibly enthusiastic about us, and he was raving about us, and we were kind of like, all right, okay. And basically, supposedly, when he flew back, he went on a two-week holiday, and during his holiday, he was like, oh. No wow. way. Yeah. Whoa. That's wow. crazy. Jeez. Yeah. Well, that's harsh. That's but, crazy. So we, so we then, just missed out maybe on being silent. But <laughs> well, I don't think yeah. we've ever been that, like, because it is. We it's, never really went not, looking for it after that, though, did we? Yeah. It's, it's not to be, to, to us, I think we've heard too many horror stories with, and we know, like, some of our friends. And it's, I don't think we're the kind of band. The, the guys that are interested in us now know our story exactly and that's probably why it will it will come about that we go with them they're called, yeah. they're actually called gentleman records cool. um but some big record companies they kind of you know it's straight all you know like I have other things I've a, I've a full-time job like I if things obviously change drastically or dramatically I I, I would assume I go the other way and go full-time ham sandwich but the way it's going we kind of we don't have that liberty you know we not we're not saying we yeah. don't want that liberty but you know what i mean you'd be the same Neve. like yeah. it's if we could go full-time it'd be amazing but like it's oh obviously it's, yeah it's, like it's a tricky would, business to get to get to know I when mean, that would be you if you're even if you're getting signed by a record label and you're going full-time you're probably going to end up getting less out of it than you, than you yeah. do when we're independent. Like, do you know what I mean? The That's amount it. that record labels take from musicians now and as well, like, you know, you're, it's, I, I always found looking at record labels over the years that 
you know, the control that they like to have over people's music and people's recordings and things like that never really sat right with me. And, sure. uh, you know, so th- that kind of thing, like I, I, I'm really proud that we've stayed independent all this time, you know. And it, it's happened before. I think we've we've asked a particular person. We headhunted a particular person to manage us years ago. And I think it, we understood it pretty quickly, actually, to be honest with you. Um, but he he turned us down and he was kind of like, you're kind of, you're at your own thing sort of thing at this point. I can't change it. There's, you know, I think we might have been going five years at this point. Uh, or no, like I think it was after Derek passed away, we needed a manager and it was a kind of a, you know, there was a, about a year where we didn't really have management as far as I know. And we asked someone and they were like, uh, you know, you, you've kind of, you find your own kind of thing. And I, I, I get that. I think we'd be the same with a record company. I think it, they need to be fairly um, cool with just the fact that we wouldn't really get any input on, if they, like a record company came around and was like, oh yeah, we heard your album, your demos, can you change them all? Can you re-record them? Maybe like, no chance. No. No. Yeah. Like yeah. we might say, oh, like, is there anything in particular you don't like? You know, we'd work with them, of course, but I think, yeah, I think we're I think already there are less companies that are sound like that, but most of them will genuinely like Neve. You've you've proof of this from other bands. Like Neve has a couple of mates in bands, and they literally get told, "Yeah, you know the way you recorded an entire album over the last month. Uh, yeah, start again, essentially." Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Like oh. you know, I don't think I think we've kind of I think that might have been good for us in the first year to kind of you know give us a direction and shape us, but you know, we were kind of left to our own devices for so long that we've just carved our own path for ourselves. Do you know what I mean? And we yeah. are who we are now. And I don't, I don't know if that's what labels are looking for. You know, I think they're <laughs> looking for like young. And There's too much baggage. <laughs> way too much baggage. Oh my God. <gasps> so what's, what's the creative process like then? Do you record and produce your own stuff or how does this songwriting work between both yourself and, and Podge? It's great, actually. We kind of have a, a fairly nice format. Obviously, you're, you're going to evolve as you go, but our format has been for a while and, and it's it should never work. If you talk to most bands, they'd be like, geez, that's a strange way of working because <laughs> usually a band is just one songwriter and that's it. Like, And they're yeah. usually quite precious about their songwriting and they don't really let anything you know go beyond that but basically what we kind of need will tell you we it's it's a it's a nice setup so basically darcy darcy will usually come to the table with the gist of an entire musical piece and it won't be like a section it'll be nearly the entire song just musically even drums and you know the the main core parts that you need in the song even sometimes the smoke and mirror bits but basically he's happy to give that to me and neve and most, for the most part, me and Neve will will write lyrics, harmonies, and maybe give our thoughts on the structure, and maybe add the odd time we might add a musical section. But it's mostly Darcy's. Darcy's like the foundation man, mm. and then he's n- nice and willing to let us kind of what's just a nice French decorate word. the house. <laughs> yes, that's the French. <laughs> Decorate how you say decorate the house. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then obviously Darcy will have because it's his it's his spawn, like he kinda has he's quite open minded and he's becoming more and more open minded. And I think in a in in a sense that sounds like the qu- qu- you know, the quarantine or the quality is dropping, but it's not. The more open minded he's becoming, the more freeing it's for us as creative songwriters. So like we're kind of because I always get a kick out of like something that's potentially a little bit risky um, mm. and things like that. It's just nice to have someone that gets it. Like, you know, they, they, they're they open minded. Like Darcy's very open minded now, whereas in the past he'd probably, he'd probably be happy enough to admit maybe 10 years ago that if I come up with something odd, he might be right, but usually if anything was a little bit left field, he'd be sketchy about it. Now he's way more into it. Just yeah, like he's way more creative minded in general, which is great. That's, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's brilliant. So obviously, you probably be like, on... "What are you saying about me?" 
uh, obviously earlier on you mentioned uh, an album in the pipeline and with Darcy in in that frame of mind it might be a wonderful thing <laughs> um, yeah. what, what, what are we to expect obviously if the tour is starting in Kilkenny on the 12th of November what what and mention of an album what are we to expect in the future um well the new stuff I mean is I don't know, how would you describe a pod? Just like, it's different again from the stuff we've done previously, but yet it's still the same. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that I'm very, very excited for people to hear because I think it is quite different for us. And like, we tr- tried a lot of different kind of, you know, kind of different things with vocals and um, sounds and things like that. So yeah, I think I'm excited, really excited to hear what people think of the new stuff, but it's, how would you describe a podge? Because I can never think of how to describe it. I know. I yeah, you know when you're so bogged down into it. But I do mm. think if you compare it to the likes of even Stories from the Surface, Stories from the Surface has kind of a lot of it's hard to explain, but like there's definitely a couple of slow songs and it's it's kind of experimental, but not in a kind of a bombastic way. Whereas this is sort of I think there's a lot, a lot of like don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I mean, Neve. The, yeah. the, the songs are way punchier, way punchier. Um, I don't know. There was no, like, again, we. I don't know. That's what concerns me sometimes about us, but I love it as well. We don't really set out with a plan. We just, things just sort of happen and that's it, yeah. doesn't it? We don't really assess things too much. And I think, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think a lot of bands might waste a lot of time or, or overcomplicate things or assess things, but, you know, not necessarily. To us, I think that would just hinder our style. We mm. just let it out, let it go, and but there's barely a slow song on this album. I think there might be, yeah, if even one, you'd call it like a kind of a strip back. It's all quite, and there's not. I don't know how it's going to work, but it's there's not a hell of a lot of like usually. If it, if I was to think of ham sandwich, I think you know sort of slowish acoustic stuff with a, maybe a twist but then you know kind of rock ish mm. stuff but this is way more kind of there's a lot of synth there's not a lot of guitar it's it's big but it's not synth, it's not a um, guitar yeah. it's more cool. synthy and um, but there's a lot there's a lot more chanty shouty stuff <laughs> that sounds cheesy but, so you know, and it's, it's, and cool. it's it's but it's well it's like i think when we went, when we done bodies and stuff like that, and we done that in the studio, like we had so much fun doing that song because it was very different, and we love playing that song live because of the energy. You know what I mean? So I think a little bit of that was behind some of the new songs that we have. Is like this is going to be class crack to play live. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, that kind yeah. of you can, and you get that off some of the songs already. Like we kind of know which ones we're going to be buzzing to play live, which class. is a good sign, I think. That's yeah, that, that's actually a better way of putting it. Even just if you wanted to simplify it, if you knew our song Bodies, I think it's sort of like a, it, it, we've we've kind of carried forward from that. Yeah. But, it's more, but I, I think that's great. Like, there's a, it, It's going to be an album that you can stick on and it's borderline kind of a party album. It's not going to be that's something that you can have a cup of tea or like, <laughs> you know, wind down. It's not really going to be one of yeah. those type of... It's a definite, yeah. you know get the party started kind of so yeah. will we get to hear a few of those tracks in Monroe's? oh definitely, definitely yeah. yeah 100% deadly yeah nice. not too many bands. though because as Pod said like you know there is a yeah. fine line between <laughs> doing the hint to like thankfully too many new, to... too many new songs and <laughs> thankfully Brilliant. we know how to play a few of them live as well because like there's at least six that we don't have to play no. them live <laughs> no. still have to figure that out yeah. <laughs> We've just yeah. been writing them, like not really rehearsing them. So, yeah, yeah. that's, that's going to be good crack. That sounds brilliant. great. I think we're going to move on to the quickfire round. Which one of you is looking cool. to do the quickfire round or would like to do it, or who doesn't want to do it? <laughs> More importantly, I have no problem doing it at all. I, I technically like to do it, but I'm terrible yeah. at quizzes. <laughs> you do it then. You do it. You do it. Yeah. But it's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So, let's do it. Uh, we'll do the newspaper <laughs> trick. Are these like, is this sort of, is it questions or is it sort of like, 
you know, rapid fire apples or apples or oranges or what? It's, rapid fire questions. So you have to think and yeah, answer quick. quickly. It's yeah. the, the first thing that comes to your head, yeah. spit it out. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, ready? <laughs> Start the clock. This right. is really Go. dangerous. So. I don't know why you're doing this. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> Another oh, one for close. the list. You ready, Fudge? <laughs> and now he's in us. He's I don't know. He's in somewhere <laughs> random in England now. He's been living his life quietly. Right. Okay. Quick fire round. Go first. Yeah. Fill in the blank. Cardi B is. <laughs> A <laughs> uh, woman <laughs> <laughs> Nickname as a child uh, Pub What superpower would you like? Um, d- d- to be able to eat constantly and never be full <laughs> <laughs> Favourite town in Ireland apart from where you live? Um, oh, Dingle <gasps> Favourite day of the week? Uh, mm. Thursday Name one of the seven dwarfs Snow White <laughs> <laughs> Snooty <laughs> Snotty w- window, window or, or aisle seat uh, Definitely aisle Who's your celebrity crush Oh I just I used to fancy What's her name I'm terrible with actress names Particularly in just one film. Do you know, is it Close or Closer or something with... Sienna Miller? No. She's in the art exhibition. <laughs> She's got black You're hair. You're so bad with... Well oh, known. Na- oh, Natalie well- Portman. Natalie That's Portman. It. That's I thought it. you were going to yeah, say Mr. Tato there for a minute, but... Um, <laughs> uh, have you ever worn socks and sandals? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tea or coffee? Um... I'd say more re- regular tea, but I'll go with coffee because coffee's nicer if you want something pretty tasty. Ask permission or beg for forgiveness? Um, depends on what it refers to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, you lost me on that one. <laughs> it's too, um, just too much range there, man. <laughs> and the last one, what's your ideal Saturday night? Um... I'd say a house party with a, a couple of the best crack friends I have with definitely one bottle of Buckfast thrown in the mix <laughs> and some some nice. cocktail kit stuff and <clears throat> maybe a, a nice meal beforehand. Nice one. Sounds ideal. Sounds lovely. Just before we wrap up, through all your experiences in the music industry, do you have a word of advice for any upcoming bands, musicians who would love to be in your shoes at the moment? Um, don't expect too much too soon, I would say. Like, don't uh, be afraid to, you know, make mistakes and learn from your mistakes as you go. Like, and get as many contacts as you possibly can, because it's all about who you can ring and who you can, <laughs> you know, chat to and who will pass your music on to somebody else and, you know, and uh, yeah, just get to know as many people in the industry as you possibly can without being annoying. Like there's, there's, there's a lion, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say something similar. But the two, the two things I well, it's it's weird because we were never in that generation, and I do kind of think there's. I think there's also a fine line. Like there's people who are brilliant on Instagram, but they might be quite young, and I genuinely would be concerned that they they it'll kind of it'll get too much for them sort of like you know mm. the, it can you can become nearly like you're selling yourself so much you know what i mean mm. yeah. i I'd, I'd, I'd be wary of that and i also would always say and it's a very boring thing but it, i think this is the only thing that i would change if we were to start all over again is a small little thing but i i kind of i don't know if i jump into just gigging with like not enough preparation i think there's a lot of bands and i really admire it um that just seem to come on the scene right like the the you know just sort of appear randomly and they're already unbelievably good like there's nice. bands like new dad i've never even really heard of mm. they just you know they come on the scene right and they're already quite good yeah like if you'd be better off waiting six months to get shit hot um because it's your it's your introduction is massive 
I think we, yeah. when we introduced ourselves, it was a bit laughing stocky. And oh, we were a bit of a mess. Bit yeah, we, for, for a while, we were a bit of a... Well, we were messers, like, you know? Mm. And then I think it kind of got to the point where we were like, okay, we really should be a little bit more serious about that, this, you know? Like, we, yeah. we, we won't drop that. Mm. Like, I'm not saying don't have fun. I think that's massively important as well. Like, ha- be, be your, like if you have a personality, let it shine, let it go. Um, but I do. It's I, what I mean by getting it right and starting right. It just is more so. Yeah, like just if get your music solid, you can be as much correct as you like. If you sound good, who cares? Like you know, yeah, yeah, or you yeah. can be a piss taker. You know, people are going to take you serious no matter how you act if your music is is really good. Mm. That's Lovely. a good point. That's solid advice. Mm. Solid advice. Thanks very Thanks. much. That is perfect. Cheers. That's a mill, guys. Thanks a million for having us. That was so, a great chat. We do this again really tomorrow. Night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, we'll see you in Monroe's. Yeah, we'll see you in Monroe's yeah. on the third yeah, of December. Um, we'll, have, we'll have a couple of glasses of bookie tickets. together backstage. <laughs> a couple we'll of glasses have. of bookie together. <laughs> oh, can I give you a can I give you a quick three question quick fire? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> You're like, what is he doing? Yeah, I'm like, what's oh, <laughs> going? <laughs> <laughs> Book fast with ice or no ice. No ice, no ice. And a, a fresh pint of Guinness or a really tasty craft beer. Fresh pint of fresh Guinness. Pint of juice. And a whiskey sour or a Tom Collins. <laughs> I don't know. Whiskey sour. Sour. <laughs> <laughs> whiskey sour. Nice. Yeah, nice. I just got yeah, right into making cocktails over lockdown. He made me a lovely cocktail last weekend before. He went home. He made me a Tom Collins, and it was delicious. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Yeah. I still prefer whiskey sours, definitely. Yeah, yeah. we made whiskey had... sours here a couple of weeks ago, and they were they were spot on. They were brilliant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what What did you? What's your What's your uh, receipt? Oh, it, well, I didn't make them. It was my my, <laughs> my brother made them, and I was just handed like well, how I good is this? It tastes so much better. My brother just hands me a whiskey sour and goes. There you go now. Drink that. <laughs> that sounds like he had some sort of a, an apology to make to you. <laughs> no apology. <laughs> no apology. <laughs> that was the apology. <laughs> yeah. Possibly, without me knowing. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, right. that's it. Great stuff. That has Thanks been Hank Sandwich. Thanks for having Pleasure. you. Thanks a million. You're listening to the Turf Shed Podcast with Dylan Connolly and Evan Burrows. Available on all streaming platforms.